All right. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome uh, to another episode of uh, O365A. Uh, in today's uh, episode, we're going to be talking uh, GDPR. And uh, I'm going to uh, pass it over to Curtis to lead us out. Thanks, Habib. So, uh, yeah, unless you've been uh, living in a cave, you, you've heard GDPR. It's uh, It's gotten a lot of talk. And basically, it's a, a set of legislation introduced by the European Union. It's coming into effect uh, May 25th, and it uh, it governs uh, the data protection and handling of of data for all EU citizens. Um, you know, specifically high level, it gives EU citizens the right to know who has their data, uh, what's being done with it, um, and the right to have it deleted. Um, and the important thing is it it applies to all companies dealing with any personally identifiable uh, data, including companies that uh, employ, contract, or just do business with uh, any European citizen. So uh, why care? Um, I, you know, I've run across a number of small to medium businesses that uh, see GDPR as a European Union only thing, and um, they don't really seem too concerned about it. And Depending on what type of business you do and what type of data you you uh, operate with, you might not need to be concerned about it. But uh, it is important to note that um, even if you're a foreign-owned company or do business outside of the EU, again, if you deal with any uh, EU personally identifiable data, um, you are going to be subject to uh, to this legislation, and that, that's why it's gotten so much uh, so much press and. You know, if you fall in that bucket of uh, you need to care, you you definitely do want to care because the uh, the penalties can be quite uh, quite onerous. I I believe I read the uh, the, the penalties if you're fined can be four uh, percent of your worldwide revenue for the last fiscal year or twenty million dollars, whichever is higher. Uh, so you know, this is something you definitely want to take a look at. Um, the data in scope again is. Um, uh, any personally identifiable data that uh, belongs to a uh, citizen of the European Union. And the stuff I read, uh, it was originally designed more for consumer type data, but it applies to any type of business with this, this type of uh, data. Uh, so let's bring it back to Office 365. Uh, from an Office 365 perspective, um, you'll care if you use Office 365, uh, all, all the workloads like Exchange Online, um, Teams, uh, SharePoint Online, which can hold this type of data that could um, be not in compliance with uh, GDPR. So uh, with that in mind, um, you'll, you'll want to carry, you'll want to take a look. And uh, Habib, what, uh, what should a, a company do if they're interested in finding out whether they, they're in, in, whether they comply or don't comply with GDPR? Yeah, so I mean, given that uh, the 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 date um, that this is going to go live, I think I believe is May twenty fifth. So it's pretty uh, fast approaching for companies that need to start um, looking in, uh, you know, and analyzing sort of um, what what they have currently from a from a personal data perspective from a user, right? So, um, you know, Microsoft recommends like they they have a what they what they call like as a four stage approach. Um, for, uh, you know, going through the whole GDPR process, right? So the first one is the discovery process, identifying, you know, what the personal data that you actually have uh, within your tenant or on the user's PCs um, and where it resides. And then, you know, secondly, there's managing, you know, how to govern all that personal data, um, you know, how it's being accessed, being able to protect it, you know, <clears throat> as, as another one, established security policies and, um and protocols to detect, and, you know, and continually, uh, uh, you know, I guess look at data breaches if there's anything uh, within that. And then the last thing is is reporting, right? Always continually getting the reports and viewing the reports, you know, on a weekly basis. Obviously, maybe even uh, daily when you're first getting started to make sure that you don't fall within any of the particular data breaches. So. Um, you know, they, they have a, Microsoft has a, you know, the, the four-step approach, which, you know, sort of guides you through the process. Um, and then uh, another um, really good uh, documentation that gives a little bit more uh, detail, which 
is provided by the Information um, Commissioner's Office, uh, gives you a 12-step process um, on sort of what you need to do um, in order to, you know, be compliant within the GDPR. So I know, well, from a Microsoft perspective, they have, um, you know, the, the a significant amount of uh, tools and, a, and a, a portal to be able to help uh, with your GDPR journey. And I'm going to pass it over to Dino to uh, talk about that. Yeah, so there's a couple of tools you'll you'll want to get uh, familiar with you know, when you're going down this path, and uh, namely there the SecureStore.Office.com, which deals with the uh, security side of things, and then more on the uh, GDPR as, as compliance assessment itself. There's um, Assessment.Microsoft.com, and I'm going to go through both um, just from a very high level. So. Secure Store um, analyzes your Office 365 or your tenant, um, the security based on your regular activities and security settings and gives you a score. So think of it like um, a credit score for your security. So we've, we've all gone through that process, I think, once or twice. So um, it sets up a nice little dashboard and it gives you a score based on um, what you're using. So Secure, secure Store figures out what services you're using, like OneDrive or SharePoint and, ex and Exchange, for example. And then it looks at the settings and, ac and activities and compares them to a baseline that Microsoft's established in terms of good practice uh, security settings. So then um, after all that, you'll get a score based on how aligned you are with that baseline. And, um, you know, so obviously the, the things that are measured will increase with the amount of workloads you're running in 365. So the more uh, features and functionality you're using uh, in terms of the workloads, the, the bigger the score will be in terms of the number of things it's looking at. So um, if you want to improve your score, you're going to review the action queue to see what you can do to help increase uh, security and, and reduce uh, risks. And what I like about the, um, about this, um, this, the scorecard, the, this scorecard, the secure score is it's got like a slider that you can uh, once you get your score and it gives you an assessment, um, you can kind of just move it along from left to right, and it tells you, you know, what your current score is. And as you move it to the right, it increases the number of things you have to do, and it puts actions in your queue. So, um, you know, to get the max, the, the further you slide the, the, the bar to the right to get to your max score, the more actions, obviously, that you're going to have to do. So um, why why that's nice is that, you know, as an organization, you can't, often implement all this stuff in overnight. So you can kind of, you know, set targets and say, okay, well, to start off in the next month, I've got nine actions that I want to get to. And then when you complete those, you can kind of move the bar along. Uh, but of course, at any time, you can just slide along to get to your max score and, and know exactly what you have to do in terms of uh, uh, plugging all those security risks. So um, on that note, the secure store score doesn't, uh, it's not an express or an absolute measure of how likely you are to get breached, but um, rather it expresses the intent um, or to the extent you've adopted all the, the recommended controls, which can help you prevent these kinds of attacks uh, or security breaches. So um, so go ahead and visit uh, securescore.office.com to get started. Um, again, the, the portal is really nicely laid out, it gives you that dashboard and uh, um, I think uh, it's it's really well worthwhile to uh, uh, to go take a look at that. So a couple of, couple of items, like for example, um, you know, a popular one is you know enable MFA for global admins. So if you if you're accessing your tenant and you're not doing it through multi-factor authentication, um, it's going to warn you and say you, you know your your admins don't have MFA. You should turn that on. And once you go and do that, um, it detects that and will increase your score by this, you know, five points or 10 points or whatever the, the security level is for that. You know, another one is reviewing the mailbox forwarding rules. So if you've got users in your tenant that are forwarding mail to another uh, address, like a Hotmail or Gmail account, you're going to get warned for that. And if once you go and review those settings, again, the, the score will move up. So a bunch of stuff like that, um, you know, uh, that you can go and look at. So great. So you've handle the security side of the equation. So in terms of the, the, the compliance side, Microsoft has a second tool that's at assessment.microsoft.com. And this one is takes you through three assessments, um, which are protecting personal data, 
compliance risk and uh, streamlining the compliance process. And so in this case, you're, you're taken through a series of questions, which results in a score for each of the three categories. And there's links to further information given at the end of each assessment um, to guide you to remediating any of those deficiencies. And again, the, the notion here is to take uh, each assessment uh, to identify the risks and take the re required remediation steps. Uh, and then it's a repeatable process. You keep reassessing along the way until you, uh, you're you at 100% of all the capabilities uh, within uh, um, the, GDR, the GDPR compliance model. And uh, so, uh, sorry, I just wanted to uh, ask Dino, you know, I think uh, that tool at assessment.microsoft.com, I think you have to go forward slash GPR dash compliance to get the GPR. Piece yeah, of yeah it, right? that's, that's correct. Yeah. So again, it's assessment.microsoft.com forward slash GDPR dash compliance. So. Right. Um, and that, uh, that's, that's the free, uh, you did sort of like a survey. You, you yeah. take questions about your business. It's, it's so basic. That's right. Wow. So One yeah, so both are free tools. You, you've got to enter a bit of information to start off your first last name and email address, company, country. And uh, obviously, then you can you can go, uh, you can start it off. And perhaps what we'll do is uh, at the end of this, we'll post to the site uh, the, the the two free uh, tools so that you can easily access them. Sounds good. Sorry, Michael, I uh, interrupted you there. No problem. It, it's kind of amusing that you have to enter in private information to do the the private. <laughs> test, but you know, uh, yeah. So I guess this iterates that you know Microsoft's cloud is. It's pretty massive with customers in, in nearly every country in the world. So you look at their uh, current compliance offerings, and there's, I think, over 70 items from Canadian privacy laws to HIPAA to SOX to UK G Cloud and now GDPR. And I, I think as, as we see uh, Microsoft's cl cloud evolve or to you know, meet all these different laws and compliance offerings, uh, you, you kind of get the benefit of, of additional tools and uh, and depending on your licensing, uh, there's some, some specific service-related tools that we kind of benefit from all this. And in Office 365, you now have the ability to get uh, access to GDPR templates for information protection. So now you can get uh, the ability to identify sensitive data or sensitive data types that are around that, that GDPR assessment. Uh, in the data loss prevention, so DLP, uh, you're able to monitor sensitive data with like I think over 80 different common sensitive data types like financial, uh, medical, personal identified information, which is specifically for GDPR. Uh, you have the advanced data governance, which uses intelligence and machine uh, assistance to help identify and find uh, or, or help you build policies around that lifecycle of data. Uh, there's e-discovery and advanced e-discovery for searching those uh, specific or that specific data around across workloads like SharePoint, OneDrive, Skype for Business, Exchange. You have customer lockbox, where now you can explicitly allow or authorize access to your customers, or your your personal or your your corporate data to Microsoft during service operations. You have advanced threat protection, so around Exchange Online. Uh, you know, protecting against malware and real-time attacks. You have threat intelligence. Uh, you have advanced security management and then audit logs so that you can track administrators, uh, what, what activities they're doing across workloads. And then on the Azure side, I think Dino was mentioning you have multi-factor for Azure AD. You have Azure AD privilege identity, uh, identity management. You have Azure information protection, which is, you know, similar to the Office 365 side. So you can, Classify, label, and protect data. Uh, it also has logging and reporting, so you can you can control that or monitor that that data distribution. There's also the Azure Security Center. Uh, Azure Storage has you know uh, data encryption, so at rest and in transit. There's also Azure Key Vault and, and log analytics. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> And that's just the, the ones that, you know, come to mind are specifically around GDPR. But you can see as, as Microsoft's building these tools to meet certain laws and requirements, you know, even though we're not in the EU, uh, we get to, you know, access this as well. I mean, I was logging into my, my TechNet account, and now I have a privacy tab where I can download all my data that I've ever posted on any of the forums. I can, you know, delete my account and terminate all that data. So I think... 
as this evolves, I think a lot of on a personal side, I, I, I get to benefit from that as well, even though I don't fall under the, the EU law. Yeah, and and I think uh, as well, most people have been noticing the, um, you know, companies that you sort of you yeah. signed up with. Yeah, getting a lot of emails about updating the terms and conditions and privacy regulation stuff, for sure. Yeah, from from Twitter to yeah, Gmail, everyone, any yeah. any clouds offering. You know, this is a a serious thing with GDPR, and you can see it's kind of like when socks came into play, right? So you have all these organizations that, you know, see what this, these fines can be up to, you know, what, 4% of your global revenue or whatever's higher, 25 million. And so, you, you know, they're not, they're not taking this lightly, but it's still these organizations are trying to interpret law and the law is not really in effect. So, you know, maybe there'll be a course correction or a couple fines. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it, it kind of homes in after a couple of iterations. Yeah, that, that two good points, Michael. I mean, number one, um, I'm really impressed actually with the the not just the number of tools, but the quality of tools that Microsoft is making available to make sure you're you're compliant. And you take you mentioned SOCs or or HIPAA. When everything was on prem, <clears throat> trying to do that, it was all up. The onus was all on the enterprise, on the company to bring in tools, do assessments. Um, if you go to the compliance manager uh, in Office 365, which I, I believe it's it's free, um, you, you get a whole GDPR compliance score, and it's all, you know, Microsoft has done all the legwork to to do a, a bulk of the assessment. So that's really really useful. Uh, the second point you made, Michael, is really interesting. Um, there's a lot of people really not sure to what extent GDPR is going to be legislated and, you know, specifically for foreign companies operating outside the EU, how heavily they're going to try to find those companies if they're, they're breached. They are saying they will. Um, but to your point, I think we'll have to wait to see <clears throat> a, a few fines and uh, a few companies get caught in the fishnet to really understand, um, how much they're going to, uh, hold companies to the letter of the law. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the who is database, right? So the domain registrar is like that, that's that database needs a complete overhaul to, to even, even come close to this GDPR requirements. And they've asked for extensions and the EU is like, yeah, no. So it'll be interesting. They might be the first ones hit with it, right? Cause that's any person that's ever registered a domain. I mean, unless they paid that additional cost to protect their data, that data is pullable from a, a text-based database, so uh, <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be interesting. All right, so I think uh, I mean we we covered a pretty big topic in a sort of a short amount of time, so I guess uh, we provided <clears throat> the highlights for everyone. So hopefully. Um, you know, companies will start uh, going through or have already been going through the uh, the process to uh, be compliant uh, with GDPR should they be uh, required to do so. And um, um, I guess uh, hopefully we'll uh, catch you on the next episode. Thank you. Take care, everyone. See you later.